I think it's always important as the underdog, as the road team, to try to get one of these first two, or both, obviously, but, yes. but certainly one of the first two. But in Toronto's situation, the, the you know the pressure that's sort of on them, do you sense that it's almost paramount that you could really flip the series with a win up there? Honestly, I'm not concerned about what happened with them in the past. Uh, you know, we look at them as a as a great basketball team, and you know we just gotta you know we gotta do everything necessary to, to win a basketball game. You know, and um, you know, obviously the you know, we're gonna have to win this series. We're gonna have to win at least one game up there. So you know, for us, it's about trying to get this game won. During the regular season, they've averaged 11 more free throw attempts than you guys in four games. Just how do you keep Demar and Kyle? Well, we watched a lot of tape on it today, and we tried to simulate it a lot in practice today. Uh, we got to be sharp with our uh, discipline with our hands, you know, and with our body position, and understand that they're going to throw their bodies into us, snap their head back, and they're going to you know, swing their arms through uh, through legal defenders and, and hope the whistle blows. And sometimes it blows, and sometimes it doesn't. But we've got to earn those no calls, you know, by being disciplined with our body position by being disciplined with our hands. Is that, is that the kind of thing you talk to the officials about before the game? You know, like, hey, watch that. Or, they know. You know, or get a, at least get a clarification on how it's going to be called. No, they, we know how it's going to be called. And if we, if we reach in and there's contact on the arm, it's a foul. You know? So, you know, we've got to, got to get our hands out of there. So, uh, you know, they're, they're, the, the league does a great job with understanding you know, how, how offensive players play and what's a foul, what's not. It seems like ages ago, but uh, the home season opener, uh, George got a technical foul, George Hill got a technical foul, and Paul got a technical foul when frustration was mounting up. Do you also talk to these guys like, listen, calls are going to come, what's is going to come against us, keep your head? I, I talk to the guys about not concerning themselves with the whistle. Play the game. Even now? Yes, absolutely. You can. You, you know, you have to focus on beating the Raptors. Not on uh, a lot of whistles being blown. Coach, you've had a lot of teams in the playoffs, a lot of experience, but this will be the first time you see this group together in the postseason. Do you have any idea what to expect from them? Not really. I mean, I have an idea, um, you know, but there is some uncertainty there because it is a new group, uh, you know, that's, you know, had a few different looks this year. Um, I feel like we've settled into a rotation which is uh, going to work for us in the playoffs. But, uh, you know, we got to see it. You know, it's still new and. I'm excited to see what these guys are capable of. What about the importance of, of Ty and the second team in this playoff series? How critical will they be? I think they'll be very important, especially, you know, not only to, to give us that scoring punch and that running game that, you know, those guys are capable of that we've seen of late with CJ hitting, uh, you know, from the three, Solomon even hitting, hitting from the three, but bringing the energy he brings, Miles, uh, you know, thread in the post and the pick and pop game, uh, but Ty Lawson pushing with Rodney. You know, the speed that that group can create, you know, hopefully is, um, you know, one that will give us some, some firepower. But we have to understand that, uh, you know, one of the greatest strengths of the front Raptors is their bench. I mean, they, they've got a bench that uh, comes in and takes over games. You know, so uh, we've got to make sure that we're able to guard them as well. Normally, active hands are important to defense. Do you have to kind of defend a different way against this particular team? A little bit. You know, I mean, you just have you have to have active hands, but it's got to be mostly in the passing lanes as opposed to uh, trying to strip the ball out of out of uh, you know guys' hands. Do you consider them a typical stretch team, or are they absolutely? absolutely. Yeah, they're not a spread. They're not a spread five team. Right. Um, they, don't, they don't really play with five three-point shooters out there, uh, but they use that. You know, those guys rolling the basket by Ambo going for the lobs and Valen Shunis is just, is just huge and the monster rolling to the basket inside. So, you know, their fives are typically rolling, um, but they'll have, uh, you know, 48 minutes to spread for them. Does that mean necessarily more solo if you match spread or will you try to beat spread with two bigs? Uh, we've been using solo a lot, you know, at the four, but we feel comfortable with LeBoy, you know, being able to be out there and Miles has got some experience if we need to throw him out there uh, on a four uh, if necessary, but solo will be a big factor in us. With Carroll coming back and only playing a few games late, obviously he's been a pretty good defender against Pauly and he's maybe an underrated player. What sort of a factor do you expect him to be? Is that a bit of a wild card? It is a bit of a wild card. He's not underrated in my mind. <laughs> You know, we played him in the playoffs a couple years ago, and he got even better last year. And um, you know, it's just a matter of him getting his legs legs under him. I think he came back at the right time for them. 
you know, where it uh, comes back, you know, right for the playoffs, then he's got to have some games to get sharp. But he's had some games under his belt, and he's looked good. So, uh, you know, I, I think he could potentially be a big factor for them, but we'll see.